Peter Malnati is on the PGA Tour policy board. After his round on Saturday at the Players, he got in front of the microphones and had some interesting things to say. Today we're going to go over his press conference, we're going to have his audio, and we'll comment on that. Dark Star, off today, probably still hanging over from his uh, St. Patty's Day. Today's Monday, and the boys are meeting in the Bahamas with the PIF, with Yasser al Ramayan. We'll have that story tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow, if we can get some details about it. Let's listen to this audio from Malnati at the players. Asked about a meeting that may be happening on Monday. And here's Peter. Uh, can you comment on the reports of a meeting Monday uh, somewhere around here? I don't even think our membership knows anything about a meeting on Monday yet. Um, I, I, I don't know the details of it. Um, yeah, I just, I think. Uh-huh. It's Saturday. <laughs> the meeting is already in motion because it's happening today in the Bahamas. Planned, obviously. You need a venue. <laughs> you need basic stuff. You don't just show up and meet in the lobby of the airport. And here's one of the, one of the key guys. There's only, uh, what, six policy board members uh, that are players. And, and Malnati's one of those. You got Tiger and the guys, right? Adam Scott, all those guys. Spieth. And... He's freely, and I don't think he's full of it here. He's just being honest. He's like, I, I don't know. And I, on the one hand, can you blame him? I mean, he's there to potentially win the golf tournament. Now, it's a long shot for him, but he wants to play well. He wants to get a nice payday. He's earning a living out there. And But, uh, you know, it's 48 hours later, this meeting, and it is happening. So that is, that just, what does that say about the, the, the board? They're not really working as one unit. Tiger, presumably, as we've been saying all along, is running the show on the player's side, maybe Spieth right alongside with him. And Tiger, you can bet your bottom dollar, he's not even at the players. He's probably already in the Bahamas, and we're assuming it's at Albany, right, where he has a place where the the Hero World Challenge is held. Unclear why they would be doing it there other than just to keep the press away because you can't get into the Albany club facility without passing through security. So there'll be no reporters. They land in Nassau. They ferry right on over to Albany and it's nice and private and luxurious and all the things that these guys would want. Uh, hmm, let's go on here with some some other Malnati comments. Uh, so he goes a little bit deeper. Let me get over here. You got to listen to this. This is uh, kind of funny as well. But I want to see a unified game where when we have events like the Players' Championship, um, you know, that we have we have all the best players in the world and we're proud to call them PGA Tour members. That's, that's uh, Okay, he's speaking from the same book that a lot of these guys have been speaking from. Oh, we need a unified game. We need all the best players together. But he throws a beautiful little kicker in here, which is, I, I, want, I just want to be proud to call them all PGA Tour players. Eh? Well, uh, let's listen to that. I, I want there to be, you know, different tours where guys can play i want that but i want to see a unified game where when we have events like the players championship um you know that we have we have all the best players in the world and we're proud to call them pga tour members that's that's uh, so what does that mean pete uh so rom kepka smith you know the the three guys that have won the three of the last five majors you know those guys uh and not to you know, including a whole bunch of other guys that should be at the, if you want to have a premier event, a major, or what you would consider the fifth major, if you're a PGA Tour fan, you need those guys. You have to have those guys. You got to have the young up and comers. You got to have Joaquin Neiman. You got to have those guys. Got to have Taylor Gooch. That's just a requirement in addition to the superstars. Okay. So, but they're going to be PGA Tour members. What exactly do these guys talk about? when they're around the conference table at these board meetings. Who is feeding them this line? And the only thing that makes sense to Darkstar and me is that the tour leadership, and let's assume that that currently is Tiger Woods and Jay Monahan, with perhaps Jimmy Dunn and Ed Hurley he taking a bit of a back seat since we've always said that those guys, Dunn and Hurley, the and the independent board members, the non-players, the business guys, the tycoons, the Wall Street guys, they're tight with the SSG guys to some extent, 
And and the PIF move is what they want. They put that together in the framework. That was their whole idea. And now the players have taken over the asylum, and we're not headed in that direction. But I don't. We don't believe that Hurley and Dunn have changed their minds. No, 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 no. Uh, it's safe to assume that Jay Monahan is. Where J- you would assume a guy like Jay Monahan, who we don't respect as CEO of anything, could be the nicest guy in the whole world, could be the biggest jerk in the whole world. We don't care. We're looking at this as a business, the business of golf. If you're going to have a, a professional sport, it better be well run. And he ain't the guy. So what's he doing? He's in job preservation mode. So if he's, oh, I better be snuggly with SSG and Tiger because that's the way the wind is blowing because I want a job. I'm making $15 million a year. There isn't another job on the planet ever that I could make $15 million a year if I'm Jay Monahan. So I'm hanging on this thing like grim death. I don't care what it makes me look like. That's what I'm doing. And if the wind starts blowing the other way, then I'll be out there singing the praises of the Piff and Yasser al once again. And I'll try to get a job there too. So forget Monahan, but what exactly is the PGA Tour telling guys like Pete Malnati? It can only be one thing. Liv is going to go out of business. Liv has no viewers. Liv has no fans. You can turn it on and see for yourselves, guys, and of course they don't, that the Liv, there's nobody there. There's nobody there. There's nothing happening. You know, it, I won't say what I want to say. So wh- they believe that. And we'll go to some tape here of Monati. I'll get to that sound right now, actually, maybe. We'll just do that. They believe this. They believe that Liv Golf is going away. Therefore, there must be a pathway back to the PGA Tour because only if Liv stops functioning will all those guys need a place to go play. And almost, most, if not all, those guys are going to want to play on the PGA Tour. They're not going to want to play in Asia or in Europe, although some of them probably would try to Europe. Um, that's, that's what he believes, and that's what he keeps saying. All right, let's get some more audio here. Ready, go. That's, that's that's what I that's what I want. Um, I don't know how we get there, but that's what I want. Are you a little surprised? I mean, we talk, a couple of us talked to Webb about this last week. Like he was said, Webb. Yeah, I've never met anybody from the public investment fund. <laughs> never spoke to them. I'm not talking Yasser, but even yeah. like at their lower levels. No. Do, do you not need to know what they want? Well, that's. I mean, that that that, that is why you know our, our commissioner has been been saying for months that the next step is to have um, Yasser meet with players of the PGA Tour. Um, he's been oh. saying that for months. And there's- oh, yeah. Uh, how did we miss that? Jay Monahan's been saying for months, months and months and months, almost, Pete says here, months, that, of course, the players need to meet with the PIF. I mean, every time I see Jay in front of a microphone, we hear that. Come on. Now, I don't think, again, I don't think Malnati, he does not strike me as a kind, he's not, (laughs) Peter is obviously an accomplished player. He would not have a tour card on any tour, and there he is with a tour card. But his his ability to be a corporate shill and uh, go out and lie in front of a camera like Monaghan is trained to do, and other corporate people are trained to do, or at least lie by omission, they're not going to tell you what they're actually thinking and doing, and they're going to mislead you. That's not really a lie. Uh, I just didn't say what we were really doing. And, of course, all companies do that. Um, and certainly the PGA Tour has been busy doing that. Uh, look no further than Jan- uh, June 6th. Oh, 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 oh. We're going to have a, a joint venture with the guys that we've been hating for the last year and a half. Uh, okay. And there are many examples of that. But Malnati here, he, he's telling the truth as far as he sees it. So who's telling him, presumably in a board meeting or on a board call, that of course the players need to meet with the PIF? Well, Monahan. He's been telling him, oh yeah, yeah, we need to get that set up. We'll get right to that. We're I'm on that. Don't don't worry. I got that covered. There's been obviously all sorts of challenges to making that happen, but um, but no, of course that's essential. What what challenges would those be? This is the challenges to having a meeting with the PIF and Yasser al Mayan. Hmm? Well, of course, he doesn't tell us that, but that <laughs> maybe getting his chickens rounded up. Tiger Woods and the gang have no real interest in the PIF at the moment. 
So maybe that's the challenge. But he actually believes this stuff. But you could have a meeting, you know, three, four months ago, Peter. I mean, that's, that's absolutely essential because at, the, at its core, like, players have no business running the PGA Tour. But this is a member. All right, well, we're going to skip over this part. Cause, uh, he is, he's been sort of grilled on this comment I, I, unnecessarily, unfairly. He's not saying the players have no business running the tour in that strict context. He's saying the tour needs professional management, and we're players. We want to play golf and win tournaments. And he's right that you need to have players on the board, not in the management meetings. That's different. The board you know, tends to the vision and the big stuff. And the little stuff, or medium stuff and little stuff, is run by the pros, you know, presumably the commissioner and his team. Although, we don't respect Monaghan. Um, so, let's get skipping ahead here. Let's go to another really interesting one. Here we go. Uh, ready, go. Whatever it is. Like, players should have involvement and knowledge of that. And even input. Like, players do not need to be running this organization. But, you know, we certainly, yeah, we certainly should be a and part he's of right. decisions like that. He's right. Unfairly criticized I, I, I say, I mean, for I that one. I, I think we've almost swung the pendulum too far in the other direction now after what happened on June 6th for players. Now that is interesting. We've swung the pendulum too far in the players' direction. Players are, he means, he can't mean anything else, that the players are running the show now. And it's too far. And the whole organization were left in the dark. The pendulum has swung too far to where players are probably feeling like they have, you know, more input than than we should. Um, and so I think I think as it comes back to sort of neutral, um, I think we're going to land in a really sweet spot where we is that a swipe at Tiger Woods? I don't know. It could be, but it's certainly on its face saying that we're not operating in the right spot right now. The players have too much say so, and he's right. And if for no other reason than the players, you talk about herding cats, herding the chickens. The players have, you know, if, if you talk to 100, the 100 top players on the PGA Tour at any given moment, you're going to get, you know, 100 different points of view. And you're going to get 50 very different points of view on big topics because they're all working for themselves and they have their own agendas and they're all in different places. Not all. There's... How many groups? Maybe there's four or five groups of players that might have similar professional ambitions because of their age, because of their ability, et cetera. The, there's way too many cooks in the kitchen to get anything out of the kitchen that's going to look right. So you, you, you can't have that. And I think Malnati's right on the money there. I give him credit for that. Uh, let's get to the six-minute mark and check this out. Uh, I mean, that's, that's obviously... that that's. That might be that might be the thing that's most top of mind for for people. Um, All right, we missed the question there. The question was, what about players coming back, the live players? What about them coming back to the PGA Tour for this grand unified uh, game that you'd like to see? That you said a minute ago, Peter. How how's that going to work? And you know, you'd, you'd find opinions that run the gamut from guys who just have a line in the sand that say never, and then guys who say, you know, obviously, I mean, I think Rory's been pretty outspoken that you know he wants to see the best players playing on the PGA Tour. Um, and so, you know, the he Rory actually hasn't said that, Peter. What he's really said is that there there needs to be a world tour. There needs to be one super tour that all the best go and play in, at least some time, some of the time. We're going to have to net out somewhere in the middle. I, I don't think, you know, I don't, I don't think, I, th I think the easiest, most likely route we go when we do find a way for guys to come back is just, you know, guys aren't coming back to the PGA Tour with membership on the PGA Tour. They're coming back to the PGA Tour as guys are going to have to earn their way back here. And, you know, I think there's certain, you know, there's. Now, you can't believe that unless what I said just a few minutes ago is true. The, the tour, Monaghan and his team are feeding Malnati and guys like Malnati, and Malnati's a board member now. You can imagine what the rank and file are getting. Liv's gone, man. There's no way they're going to. We got our money from SSG. Liv's going to be pouring money into a hole, and they're going to quit that at some point. It's unsustainable. They, they're, you know, that's just not going to make it. So, really, we don't have to worry about that. What we need to think about is do we let them back here or not? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, 
certain benefits that we've been able to establish and put in place, which will be, you know, really, really good for the PGA Tour and its membership and, and our fans, too. This, you know, this this player equity oh, yeah, plan, them. I don't understand it. That's a little bit above my head, but I certainly know enough. to. Now, that's a, <laughs> I have to stop the tape. And this player equity thing in the PGA Tour Enterprises, that's going to be great, too. Now, I don't understand it. It's over my head. Let's let's rewind the tape on that one. PGA Tour with membership on the PGA Tour. They're coming back to the PGA Tour as guys are going to have to earn their way back here. And, you know, I think there's certain, you know, there's certain benefits that we've been able to establish and put in place, which will be, you know, really, really good for the PGA Tour and its membership and, and our fans, too, this, you know, this... This player equity plan, I don't understand it. That's a little bit above my head, but I certainly know enough to say that I really do support it. I'm all for it. I don't know how it works at all, but I'm all for it. Now, this guy votes at the board for stuff to happen or not happen. I mean, you, it, it, that's qual that that it, in a public company, that's that's uh, that's grounds for dismissal. Your dereliction of duty. You don't. Your job is to understand that kind of high-level visionary stuff, or get the heck off the board. I'm I'm all for it, but I don't know really how it works. Yeah, it's not gonna work for any of the players. Anybody, you know, anybody that knows anything about corporate structures. I, I mean, you get your players come and go. You, you could have a two-year career. You could have a twenty-year career on the PGA Tour, and you only have this much stock okay you have a hundred shares pick a round number a million shares doesn't matter you're gonna start giving out stock options to legends of the game because you know tiger's got his hat in the middle of all that i want i want that i want more of that less of over there and all of that <laughs> and so they're gonna hand it all out and then eight years from now what are they gonna hand out okay that, that's problem number one problem number two Stock options and, and equity awards are possibly worth something for essentially two reasons. A liquidity event, you sell the company and you trade your shares in for cash because you just sold the company. Oh, well, they're not going to do that, obviously. I'm not going to sell the tour. Uh, probably not. Uh, although there is a wrinkle there that mm, we'll mention in a second. Or you pay dividends. They're going to start paying out profit or cash flow to past players? Or is that something you take away with you in the pension fund? Okay, yeah, you could structure it that way, but then what do you give the guys 20 years from now? You're, you're, you're running out of, of, of stock because it's not set up for a, a, like a company. It's a continuing sport. Now, what if, pivoting back to what I just said about the liquidity event, what if the, the, the secret there... Uh, that's going on in Tiger's mind, particularly in Tiger, as he races to gain another billion dollars so he can catch up with Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Uh, yeah, we're going to get our awards now, and then we're going to do a up round with the PIF. We're going to value the PGA Tour at $5 billion or $3 billion right now, get our stock grants our stock options valued at that number five billion and then we're going to sell a whole bunch of stock to the PIF valuing the whole thing at 20. so our investment going to go up triple the three bagger either two three four bags you know what that you know crazier things have been said and maybe done but in this instance I don't know. Now, the PIF is not naive come on uh quite the opposite they're a sophisticated global investor uh, you guys are going to, what? No, no, no. We're not investing in the PGA Tour so that you, we can fund your stock options. No, that's not going to happen. And maybe, I don't think Peter's been told this either. Obviously, he didn't understand anything. But Tiger's probably thinking that. Eh, um, possibility. SSG may make players maybe owners as well. the tour. And guys who violated our policies aren't ever going to be eligible for that. And that's yeah, because I know John Rahm is really interested in coming back and get equity shares in the PGA Tour when there's no liquidity. Um, in, in lieu of the hundreds of millions that he's just gotten. So just more goofiness, more goofiness. All right, here's another good one. Here's Pete Malnati validating what Darkstar and I have been saying for maybe a couple, three months now about the rank and file. It was in our conspiracy show most recently, uh, Conspiracy of Four, where the rank and file is one of those groups that, do, that are never piffers. And why would that be? 
watch how Malnati validates this con- this piece of the conspiracy for the rank and file. All right, listen closely, and we'll play it right now. So as a player, I know you know. I'm. I don't know if you guys pay any attention. I'm sure you do because you're you're great. But I don't even want to play on the Corn Ferry Tour right now because the players are so good. It's not like I need better players to come play against. But you know, whoever wins this golf. T- there, there you go. I, I, it's not like we need. Now he's talking about the you know the John Roms of the world coming back to the PGA Tour and his little brain. Not little brain. Not, I'm sorry, Pete. His, I'm looking at Pete here on my screen. The his brain it, it, now he's doing this, you know, on the stump, and he's not a trained communicator, so this is hard to do. And he, uh, so give him some slack. But you know, I don't even want to play. Now the the reporters didn't ask him that directly. He pivoted there all by himself. I I don't even really want to play on the Corn Ferry Tour. I mean, that's hard to win to make a living, and that is where the rank and file is coming from and Pete Malnati is the rank and file he's a rank and file player he's never won any you know anything of consequence uh he's the face of the rank and file and that's why he's on the board he's probably very popular with the middle of the road player and a middle of the road player on the PG tour that has a card is an excellent player but not compared to the top 20 guys that are in the top 20 sort of year in and year out we don't need more competition that's really the last thing we need. On the other hand, to keep purses, now he doesn't say this, but he knows, to keep the purses high and to keep fans engaged, we have to have the best players or nobody will watch and we won't have a sport. Hmm. So how do we balance that? And that's the challenge that conspirators have. SSG, Tiger, the, the, the independent board members and the rank and file, those are the four conspiracy groups from that video. You go watch it it's a couple weeks ago. Um, they, they sort of have a similar objective but very different motives. Keep the piff out. And from Malnati's point of view, he'd really, let's just let, you know, maybe John and Kepka. We'll get Rom and Kepka. And then keep all those other guys out. Let them retire somewhere and go play the Asian tour because then I, Pete Malnati and the guys that I represent have a much better crack at you know finishing 30th or 20th in a tournament like the players instead of 10, 20 spots down, which you do the math, that's a massive amount of money. Just having another 10 live guys at the players is going to skew the cut. I mean, if Neiman's there, Gooch is there, Hatton's there, there's a long list. I mean, it, it's... It's a decent list. That 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 maybe Malnati doesn't make the cut. Well, that that's a big payday to signature event, and he knows that. And the rank and file, believe me, they're they're looking at their finances every week, like oh man, and and figuring out how to put the not nickels, but to put money together. They've worked their tails off to get here, and they sure don't want to give it away. And you know, Malnati, well, here's a good chance to say how he finished. So this whole presser is on Saturday. After he plays well, on Sunday, he shoots the highest score in the field. What a, you know, a shame for him, but he's plus nine, I believe it is. He's nine over on Sunday at the players to finish, I think, third from the bottom. He, so he's almost dead last. Now, is that his game? Is that... Somebody got to him on Saturday night after this presser and said, hey, man, there's a meeting on Monday. Uh, don't go out there talking about the fact that you don't know about it. You should know about it. You're a board member, so don't do that again. And the meeting's in the Bahamas. You got it. You can jump on one of the tour jets, and we'll get you over there. It's a short hop, from a very short hop from Ponte Vedra over to, to Nassau. You know, It's a 15-minute gig, 20-minute gig, not 15. It's a 20, 25-minute flight. You get right there, you get in and get out. And and lo and behold, his game disintegrates the next day. Well, <laughs> you know, the joys of being on the PGA Tour policy board right now. Okay, and here's the, the final little bit uh, from Malnati, uh, which is, it really is a perfect example of how not plugged in at least him as a policy board member is to the overall situation with the PIF and Live Golf, which is 
their focus. It has to be. It, it's a it's a, a monumental problem for them, and you would think that the board would be all over it. Okay, here's a little ditty on team golf. Do you, do you see Peter um, uh, pathway or how in the, how you integrate team golf? What do you see as the bigger obstacle? I guess. Yeah, that that was so. That that's something that I I need to understand better. What um, you know, what Yasser is really trying to accomplish here. Because like, if we look at you know, I, obviously the greatest team event in golf right now is the Ryder Cup, and it's incredible. But what this sort of I, I, I don't know, Liv, what they're doing, but it seems like a very forced team model to me when, at the end of the day, are there any fans that care which team won the tournament? Like, and I, I don't know. I don't know what fans of Liv want or care about, but, like, are there any fans that care who won? Like, that seems so contrived to me. And so, like, I feel like we could also create some contrived team golf, something somewhere outside of the FedEx Cup season. But, like, what what does he really want is a question that I want to understand better because I. <laughs> Why don't you throw in a, a reference to the Tomorrow Golf League? That would work right here. Yeah. I don't think it's some contrived fake, you know, add up random guy scores and call him a team. I don't think that's it. I think what he means is more stuff like the Ryder Cup, I, w- I would guess. But I have no clue because I haven't talked to him. Um, I have no clue because I haven't talked to him. But you, you haven't picked up a golf publication and just. I don't know, maybe spent 10 minutes, maybe while you're in the bathroom, figuring out what Liv's doing just as a model. It's not that complicated. It might take you 10 whole minutes to have an understanding. So you might be able to express some, you know, interesting points at the board when you're talking about how to compete with them. Um, so that's, I, I, I don't think, I don't see, I don't see a way that we incorporate team golf into the FedEx Cup schedule. I just don't, I don't, I personally don't want that, but... Ooh. You, you, you might get an icy stare from Tiger Woods when they walk down the hallway for the next board meeting. You, what do you mean that TGL, where I'm going to play, Tiger Woods, where I don't have to walk? Uh, what do you mean we're not going to get you know integrated in? It's mm, I'm, I, we want points. We we want all that for the team golf. What, what are you talking about, Malnati? Uh, I can always have my mind changed if I see a great mm-hmm. idea. But personally, I don't want that, and I don't see a way that we do that, that we integrate team golf within the FedEx Cup schedule. We're going to have... Now, that is expressing, truthfully, the viewpoint of the rank and file. The rank and file isn't a part of the team golf. They're not invited to the Tomorrow Golf League, where it's always tomorrow. They're not there. It's, the, it's another giveaway to the top players. So if you're in the top 30, then rock on. But if you're not in the top 30, then team golf is... What? They're going to get even more money? Out of the PGA Tour's coffers, that's less money for us. So Malnati truthfully is expressing that viewpoint. So he is being representative of the rank and file, which is his job. So good for him. Some time to play with in the fall, I think. We're going to have some options, but I don't. I just don't know. Here. So to clarify, you are you are not a big cliques guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, you're not looking at the picture, but you hear him say, "I'm sorry." He has no idea, literally, what the what that reference to the cliques is now granted we don't like the name or at least i do really don't like the live team names and have said so from the beginning but i mean you're on the board of the competitor that's can you imagine the uh, a board member of toyota not knowing what a porsche 911 is maybe a honda accord there i i think their business model though is they see those teams as franchises that could be sold and so, like, that's a potential revenue source, you know, in, in terms of... Now, you hear that? You have to listen closely there. Oh, that's Malnati responding to the reporter. Oh, they see them as franchises. Really? He's never heard that before. And it's obvious in his face, in his expression. He's, oh... If, if you if you were to go down this road, like you got the Washington Commanders and the Pittsburgh Steelers and the like, like and you're gonna have a. I I a listen. Cliques. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just the messenger. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I have no, I have no idea. I, and then, no, no. But they that was their, yeah. that was their business plan. Interesting. Like, like the captains have. Is that what is that is that sim- you guys must love me because I sit up here and ask questions and don't shut up. I should probably just leave. But <laughs> um, is I mean is that what is that what we're doing with this TGL thing? Like the TGL the the teams of that are like 
owned by owners. I just, the only reason I even know that is because I saw um, the Atlanta thing. There's a team in Atlanta, and it's like owned by the same guy that owns the Falcons, who's now come onto the PJ Tour Enterprises board. And it sounds the guy. You think you would have the name there, right? The guy that, uh, you know, that rich guy that owns the Falcons, he owns that Atlanta TGL thing. I think I saw that. And that's really exciting, but I had no idea. Now, he's going to see Tiger today at the at the meeting in, in the Bahamas. That's what TGL is. So, so, so there you go. There's some team golf. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll whack it inside a dome or whatever they're doing. And Peter, something you said earlier. <laughs> There's what the rank and file thinks about the uh the, the tomorrow golf league where you whack it into a screen in the dome it, to them it's it's just a giveaway to the top players i mean malnati doesn't take it seriously and you know tiger woods take we should we could play the tape of tiger talking about tgl at the the genesis just a couple weeks ago and then run it up against his fellow board member and what he thinks of tgl tiger with the the negotiations with the piff how much of an issue is, is team golf and what is your opinion on team golf fitting into the, the future sport? Yeah, uh, what, how team golf is. It, it, it's going to be a part of the tour. It is part of the tour. We have, we have TGL. So um, what that looks like as far as official events goes, you know, that we don't know what that looks like yet as of now. What Tomorrow Golf League provides, it is team golf. It is... It's going to be entertaining. Now, whether or not we can trans put that together with with official events, you know, we don't know what that looks like, and that's one of the reasons why we have SSG to be a part of of what that could possibly look like. And so there there might be a awkward conversation. Nah, Tiger does it. He won't even bother to talk about it probably with Malnati, but he'll say something to somebody. Hey, get Malnati on board with the TGL. Hurry up. So there you have it. Uh, Malnati, to give him credit, he went to the microphone, he spoke his mind, he, sp he communicated effectively what the rank and file, which is his constituency, that's why he's got a seat on the board. He's not Tiger Woods. He's the opposite of Tiger Woods. He, uh, t t tomorrow Golf League, yeah, what? That's like a clown show. He didn't say that, but that's sure what his body language and his level of knowledge, I don't know anything. He knows about the, the same amount maybe a smidge more the, about the TGL as he does about live golf. So he is checked out in a lot of ways from the board, and yet there he is on the board. So very illuminating uh, press conference, and thank you, Peter, for, for doing that. So today, Monday, March, what is it? March 18th after St. Patrick's Day, everybody's going to be meeting in uh, New Albany there at Nassau. We'll hopefully get some details, although they're not going to probably release too many details, but who knows? Maybe somebody will get to a microphone and say something. Uh, about what came out. It'll probably be a prepared statement and, you know, not exactly the truth. Uh, and there'll be some lies by omission, but we'll be on that. We'll bring it to you. So for now, for Darkstar, who's still busy recovering from St. Patrick's Day, B-Team is out. If you'd like more Thinking Man shows and topics, then subscribe to our audio podcast. That is where you will get at least three new shows every week. And topics that will never get to YouTube. And there are a lot of those that we like to talk about that will never get to YouTube. Use the link in the video description below. And thank you again for being a fan.